Uh, this video is on utilising capacity efficiently. Um, I'm going to try and go through it as quickly as possible because we've already I've already spoken about capacity in a previous video. But in this section, we need to make sure that uh, you have an understanding of the importance of capacity and how to utilise capacity efficiently. So um, I won't dwell on this because I've been through it in a previous video, which I'll link in the description. But um, capacity is the total output a firm can produce when fully utilising all of their resources. And capacity utilisation is the, the, the uh, proportion of that um, potential output that is actually being produced. Um, so we can have a high capacity utilisation where an uh, organisation is operating flat out, they're using all of their resources as much as they can, the labour is working as hard as possible, the machinery is on all the time, um, you're making the asset sweat is the uh, term that's used. So um, these are some of the advantages, you're going to get lower unit costs, should be higher profitability. Uh, it can be motivational if the workforce are uh, busy. Um, however, we're not going to be able to respond to um, changes in demand terribly well. There's a lack of time for maintenance and repair. It could be argued that it's stressful for the workforce. Um, there are impacts on the quality of production, etc. So, um, what is the importance of capacity? Well, it determines the limit of a company's ability to match demand, okay? So if we've got a capacity of, uh, let's take um, uh, Manchester United, for example, I believe their capacity is around 80,000, I'm not 100% sure on that, but Manchester United, extremely fo popular football club to watch, there's 80,000 capacity limit. That doesn't move for a popular uh, Champions League fixture, for example, where you might have 100,000 or 120,000 tickets demanded. Um, they can't match that demand. Um, so that uh, is uh, part of the importance of capacity. Uh, it limits their profitability. They can't tell all the tickets they'll possibly be able to. Um, it uh, impacts the corporate objectives and strategy, okay, if, you know, um, it, uh, our capacity, so let's just say that Manchester United wanted to be able to uh, maximise uh, its ticket sales revenue and it decides that it can do that by increasing capacity, it might set itself a corporate objective of expansion. It's going to influence your unit cost. Um, the more efficiently you're using your labour, your capital, uh, the cheaper your unit cost will be. Uh, it can affect worker motivation, as I discussed in the previous video. It can affect your brand image. Okay, if you uh, think about my team, Charlton Athletic, if you go down to Charlton these days, uh, they've got a 27,000 capacity stand and they've had as few, few um, as fewer supporters in there uh, as about 5,000. Okay, it doesn't look very good when you've got an empty stadium. Equally, if you keep on walking past a restaurant and it's empty, uh, there's no one in there, they're not using the capacity, you're going to start to ask questions about, the, uh, about that business. Um, it determines investment decisions, uh, your capacity. Are you going to invest in increasing capacity or is that not necessary? So, um, how can we utilise capacity efficiently? Well, if there's under capacity, we would look to increase demand, perhaps, maybe through marketing efforts, so we can use our capacity more efficiently. We might sell off unused assets, so if we've got factory buildings that are unused, uh, or underused, we might just get rid of them. Um, supermarkets have been quite creative with this. They, they've bought a lot of floor space, and sometimes not all of it is used. So supermarkets let it out um, to you know coffee shops and things like that. You regularly see in there. Um, so they uh, they use the uh, under capacity to generate extra revenue that maybe um, they hadn't intended to initially. Um, in terms of overcapacity, 
Uh, in other words, we, we, we're working at a very high capacity. We're going to look to reduce demand somehow, perhaps. Okay, if we've got a very popular product and it's continually selling out, maybe that indicates that our price uh, point is too low. Maybe we can uh, take out some of that demand, enable us to meet the demand more effectively by raising the price a little bit, taking out some consumers from the, the demand, um, and uh, uh, yeah, mani managing that, um, uh, that demand a bit better. Uh, we may decide to invest in new assets, such as a new factory, uh, new workers, uh, or we may decide that we're going to subcontract uh, work out to third parties uh, or outsource some non-essential functions uh, to other organisations. What we decide to do to manage capacity is going to depend on our corporate objectives. Have we got a corporate objective of never-ending growth, continual uh, increase in profits, or are we quite happy actually to just focus on the current customers that we've got um, and improve service to them? Um, it's going to depend on the finances available. Do we have the money available to expand? It will depend on what we think is going to happen uh, in the future to our demand. Um, and it will depend on what we believe our competitors' actions uh, and reactions may be to us increasing our demand. Okay, so um, the that was just looking at the importance of capacity and how to utilise capacity efficiently. For more on capacity, have a look at the previous video. Thank you.